Well, hi kids, it's time for the Jump Ministry message of the day. We are at part four of our series, Now What? Hey, get your Bibles. We will be in the book of Philippians chapter four, verse six. I'll tell you more about it next. Here we go. Well, good morning, kids. It's time for the Jump Ministry message of the day. Today is Thursday. Today is going to be super duper hot, so I hope you're drinking lots of water, which I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to ask you to get your Bibles, open them up to the book of Philippians in the New Testament, where we're going to spend time learning about prayer today. This is the next part in the Now What series. Now what? That you've become a Christian. Now what? All right. Hope you've uh, been learning from this. And I hope you have a journal. And I hope you're doing your homework. Homework. i got to come up with another idea for a, a synonym for homework. Torture? No, no, no. Hey, we'll be right back, and we'll get started here. Well, hi again, guys. The fourth point I want to make to you in this series on the, now what is this. You have the privilege of prayer. You can pray to God about anything and everything. God wants to hear from you. It's like uh, we talk all the time on our cell phones. Think of all the time that you spend on your cell phone talking to somebody or texting somebody. How much time do you spend talking to God? And in the Bible, there's an, a verse in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, and it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. What a way to start the day if we would just slow down a little bit and say, God, I need you today. I need you to carry me through the day. Wouldn't that be a nice way to start the day every day? All right, on the next slide, I came up with some clever synonyms for homework. That All I want to do is talk to you about this. Commit yourself. That means make a decision that you're going to do something. Commit yourself to getting used to talking to God. Start out with about five minutes a day. And you know what? Make that focused time talking to God. What that means is no distractions, no TV, no computers, no games, definitely no cell phones. Focused time with God. It's five minutes. Okay? Maybe do it while you're brushing your teeth or something. You, know? you, you can do it any time. But what I'm trying to get you to do is completely focus on, I'm just going to talk to God right now. So maybe... Brushing your teeth is not a good idea. Maybe just going off to a quiet place and sitting there and just talking to God. Just try it. First week, maybe even the second week. Just try it. Five minutes a day. And I'm pledging I'll do the same thing. Just five minutes a day, talk to God. Talk to Him just like you would talk to your friends. Not, don't be disrespectful now. I mean, He is still God. And we are to be reverent around God. But you can speak to Him like a friend. Sometimes you'll hear me say, And Lord, or you'll hear me say, Daddy. You know, because that's how I talk to God. But I, I keep it reverent. And there are times when I'm a little upset and I may not say the right words. Don't worry about that. Just get used to talking to him. So five minutes a day, I'm really asking you to try to do that. You know, it can be in the morning. It can be at night before you go to bed. You ought to start your day out. My suggestion, my opinion is you ought to start your day out by doing it. But we can talk more about that. Remember Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. That's a real good verse to commit to your heart. Now, by that, I mean memorize it. That's a real good one. All right, we'll be right back. And here's what I want you to do in your journal. Be right back. All right, kids, what I'd like you to do in your journal is begin a list of things you're talking to God about and the concerns that you're bringing to him. What I mean by this, you see the little girl in the picture here? She just got her little journal and a pen, and she's writing down some things that she's been talking to God about and concerns are like things that are on your mind, on your heart. Maybe you heard something or saw something. Just write it down because you can go back to this and look at it and see how God answers your prayers. It's really fun to do this. So I hope it'll be something you do. And you don't have to write a lot if you feel like writing a lot. I remember my daughter used to write all the time and just fill pages up with her ideas. And I'm just asking you just to make a little list. All right? Well, just try it if it's something you want to do. Okay, let's see what's next. We're going to have a new one today, okay? It's called Sins Erased, kids. Corey and I are in our 
purpose-driven devotion for kids, purpose-driven life devotion for kids. There you go. And we're looking at something today called Sins Erased. And you want to read the, the verse up on the screen? Because it's a little different than what's in the book. Because uh, I like the other translation that we're using up there. You got it right there? Can you see it? Can you see it? Suppose you sin by violating one of God's law's commands. That's not right. Let's try it again. Suppose you sin by violating one of the Lord's commands. Even if you're unaware of what you have done, you're guilty and will be punished for your sin. Oh, no! See, yeah. How does it feel when someone hurts you? It feels bad. Yes, it does feel bad. Maybe a friend tells a lie about you or a sibling blames you for breaking a glass in the kitchen. It feels bad, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Yep, we got to fix your hat, dude. It feels bad when someone says that we did something we didn't do. Well, do you know that we do that to God? God created everything, and he's perfect, and he's good all the time. Sadly, because of Adam and Eve's choices in the Garden of Eden, people turn on God and hurt him. Did you know you can hurt God? Hmm, that's called sin. Sin's when we do the wrong thing or, or make choices against God's perfect goodness. And it's like calling God, who really loves us, it's like calling God a bad name. The fantastic news is that God doesn't hold our sins against us. In the Old Testament, he gave the Israelites a way to make things right. They could bring offerings as a way of admitting the wrong things they had done and saying that they were sorry. These offerings were to be sacrifices and would be payment for their sins. However, in the New Testament, Jesus came along to make things right for everyone. And nowadays, we can do the same thing through sincere prayer. We've been talking a lot about prayer today, haven't we? Yeah. You know what, God? I know that sin happens every day, but I didn't realize it hurt you. Please forgive me for betraying you. That was a hard one today, wasn't it, kids? Yeah. It sin's no joke. But we have the privilege of prayer, and we can pray to God and say we're sorry. That's called repenting. And God doesn't hold our sins against us. Isn't that amazing? And we don't have to take sacrifices to church, you know, and try to, to please God and you know, show that we're sorry by giving a, a, some kind of a sacrifice. Let's close out in prayer today. Because this is a hard one to think about, that we can hurt God. I thought God is the most powerful thing in the world. We can't hurt him. What I mean by that is we hurt his feelings. We make him sad when we sin. Because he doesn't want us to sin. He wants us to grow more and more like his son, Jesus. All right, I want you all to think about that. Sin is no joke. Okay? And maybe we need to say a prayer like this. Heavenly Father, please forgive us when we sin. When we confess today that we didn't even talk to you, we haven't even prayed to you yet, and please encourage the children and people that are watching this video, please encourage them to pray, to take five minutes and just spend time with you and talk about what concerns we have and what's on our heart. Please watch over our families and those that are on the way to the hospital and those that are in the hospital. Just watch over them, Lord, and please let them heal and come home. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. I love you. I'll see you in the morning. I think I'm riding up to Baltimore in the morning, so I'll have to get up real early and record the video, okay? Yeah. And you're going too. Okay. I get to go to Baltimore. I can't see. I get to go to Baltimore. Do da, do da. All right. I don't know what song that is. All right, man. We'll see you when we see you. Be good. Be kind. All right. Bye bye. Well, kids, that's going to do it for today, and that's going to conclude part four. Remember, we have the privilege of prayer. Tomorrow, look for part five. You have the treasure of God's word. And we'll be in 2 Timothy, if you want to look early, we'll be in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. I'm looking forward to spending time with you on that. Until then, God bless you, and God keep you. Bye-bye.